time goes on. I know I think it was one of the townships you represent. I just saw in the paper a week or two ago, it was a Smith Township and a perhaps tops, toxic waste dump. Mm -hmm. uh, folks will be happy to know we could have it here with their regulations. Uh, in fact, maybe that's what's maybe the look here. I don't know. But this is the opportunity uh, to, to, uh, to do this in a logical approach. Um, I seem to get the, uh, the feedback from some of those people that are against it that they don't want any at all. But, uh, so there is no compromise other than none. And that's certainly not a compromise. Uh, the people at this table and the people sitting back there are intelligent people. We could sit down and, and work on this and continue to work on this uh, as, as, it, as it's being implemented. We'll come back again in, in another two months, three months, six months, or whatever, and come back to polishing it up and make it work. Or we can play hardball and say nothing at all. Uh, and, and, uh, and once we get unwanted development, um, you can't turn it away. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how that would happen. Um, I think it's come down to the point of it's it's a, it's, a, it's a hard and fast yes or no, and I don't think that's the way it should be. Uh, and in fact, early on, some of the folks I'm looking at looking under right now that are against the, the zoning package that told me, "Gee, you know, there's a lot of things that a lot of things you need, especially like around West Alexander." But how do you choose one area of the township and tell them this is what the regulations are, and, and they're different in Claysville, and they're different in on Buck Run, you, you, you can't. I think we need a comprehensive package, and, and I've been and I've read our comprehensive plans of this township clear back into the 1960s. And every comprehensive plan that I have read, including one I think from 1966 or 67, they recommended that the township have a zoning plan, over and over and over again has been recommended. And I know that this board has has tried this more than once. And it's failed every single time at some at some point. Uh, but in those those days, we didn't have the, the, the activity, the, the gas and coal activity that we got coming at this township. It's an everyday, uh, an everyday uh, battle on some on some front in this township. And uh, you can ask the township office personnel. You can ask the police personnel. Even ask the, 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 the road department, or ask the, the janitor, ask anybody that can tell you that, that we have increased activity in this township and that we have no means to handle it. And if you want to fix something, you better have something in your toolbox. Right now, I think our toolbox is mostly empty. That's all I have. Then I would open up to the public for comment. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, well, before you speak, will you state your name and address? Ed Shangle, Donald Township. You were not sworn in, were you, sir? No. Praise your hand, please. Solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Absolutely. Spell your last name for me, please. S-H-I-N-G-L-E. Thank you. Um, Doug just brought up gas and coal. There's nothing in that document in front of you that pertains to coal. Nothing. We discussed that in the planning commission meeting, and you were going to look into it, and then it was cut short. Is that not a fact? I believe it was discussed, yes. Is there anything in the document now about coal? I don't believe there's something specific to coal. Like, say, air shafts? I would have to double check, but I don't believe so. I don't. Okay, I was getting ready. But for you, it's, it's Michael Smith, Donald Township. I'm one of the newly elected supervisors. 
um, the other three are sitting here in the audience. Um, and Doug's correct. We are not for zoning, especially the way it was done in this township. The sad part is, the three of those guys sitting up there were in such a hurry and had such a chip on their shoulder to pass it. If they would have listened to what I told them in the very beginning and sent the survey out two years ago when I asked, I don't know how the vote would have come down. I really don't. But no, they had to do it their way. They had to just push forward and shove it down our throats. So we went to different we started with the plant, one of the meetings, and tried to make suggestions. And some things they did, they did give on. I'll give them credit on that. But most, no. And then we went to court, and we won, and it went back. And they were forced to send it to the planning commission. And there was a whole. I'm not going to get into all the different things that happened on the planning commission. But they basically set up the board so it couldn't fail. They put their own people in place. That's fine. That's, that's the game they played the whole time. We, we, we sent up for the election to be moved to five supervisors because we knew the odds, number-wise, would be better for us in that, in that thing, in that uh, premise. So we overwhelmingly got that put in place in a vote in November. And then we went out and get our petitions, and we all got put on the ballot. And we even accidentally ran an extra candidate. He forgot to, take his, he forgot to go up to the election office and take his name off. So we ran an extra candidate. And we still, even the ninth candidate won, because the people in the township were actually, I don't know that I don't know that they were more upset about the zoning or the fact of the way the matter the way you guys did it. You didn't listen. You were rude. You were obnoxious. All three of you were rude and obnoxious to the people that came to the meetings. Actually, to the point where some of them were scared to come because they didn't know how you were going to come down on them. And that's sad. That's very very sad. You guys still have to live here. So you can sit up there and say what you want, Doug, but the township spoke. The people in this township, in, in the primary, they voted in nine people if they could have. They were pissed. Excuse my French. They were tired of this. They don't want to be treated that way. I'm not exactly sure what all they want, but they didn't want to see it implemented the way you guys wanted it implemented. And you know the funny part about the whole thing, Doug? When you got on the board, you were on the Planning Commission board one time. The time you came on, you rammed it down our throat. The part that you didn't get was, if you would have just let it play out and go through the whole process, we would have never been able to hold it up as long as we did. And now, yes, we held it up. That's a fact. I'll admit it. This is sure as I'm standing here. I'll admit it. We held it up. But if you wouldn't have rammed it through and let Michael finish and the planning commitment finish, what the hell would we have had to, to argue about? But no, you had to stop 50 pages short and just say, we're pushing it through because I'm not sitting here and listening to this. It's your fault, Doug, that it's went that way. You think about that. If you would have let it go through the whole process, there's no way that it wouldn't have gotten through. We would have, what would we have had to bitch about if you would have listened to everything that we had to say? But no, it's you. It's, your, it's the way you went about it, and you pushed it through. And all you did was piss people off in this township. Well, you know what? In January, when the four new members that are sitting right here come in, it will be gone. And we're going to start... From the beginning, the first thing we're going to do is take that damn ordinance book and we're going to clean it up like you, we told you guys it needed done. If you remember, 
When I stood up in that meeting two years ago, and you made that point two years ago, and I ripped you guys for what you was going, and I told you verbatim everything that was going to happen over the next period of time. I was right about every stitch of it. Every last stitch of it went exactly like I said. Because you didn't listen. You didn't open your ears up. That's all I have to say. What are you? Catherine, do you want to go? Me? Yeah, do you want to go? And I'm going to read this because it's quite long. It's okay to your say... Your name? Catherine Prescott. It's okay to say you have the right to sell your land or rent your land, it's good for you. But what about your neighbors? Zoning assures us that the way we use our property aligns with how everyone around us is using their property. Houses typically with houses, retail with retail, industrial with industrial, farms with farms. Donegal Township will be one of the last townships to develop zoning. The current environment of development in the area makes zoning critical to uniform and safe development. The residents who are against zoning have offered the reason that there is no development and will be no development in Donegal Township. That simply is a pipe dream and a denial of facts. In the September 29th issue of the Observer Reporter, an article was published about the large shell cracker plant being built as of date in Monaca, Beaver County, PA. The article quoted following, Shell will be employing 600 directly at the plant, excluding many indirect jobs that will support the cracker plant needs. One of those needs is the expectation that a large industrial gas company will bring operations here to provide nitrogen oxide to the plant. We think it's absolutely essential for growing and adding to the plastics and petrochemical production base in the region. Adding that the expectation is for additional crackers to be built in the area. Within two to three years, additional plastics manufacturing companies will be coming to the area. That article also stated that a recent study conducted by HIS Market was found that the greater Appalachian basis has the capacity to support as many as four additional ethane cracker plants. With a forecast of 2.7 to 3.7 billion in investments in natural gas liquid assets. The realization of this possibility would turn southwestern Pennsylvania into a world-class petrochemical hub. In Washington County, upgrades to existing plants and construction of new gas processing and storage facilities is also expected to greatly enhance regional capabilities when it comes to processing ethane and other high-value natural gas liquids. With the right policies, the Commonwealth has the opportunity to realize a new wave of job-creating petrochemical manufacturing growth. Another item of interest in the article was that Shell was building a water treatment plant which would be for the use of Center Township. Those who claim no development will come don't seem to realize that where there is money to be made in a large enough corporation or an industry has an interest in an area that the facilities will be built. October 20th, an article was published that stated, the creation of a petrochemical hub is the focus point of the Forge the Future initiative. The realization of this possibility would turn southwestern Pennsylvania into a world-class petrochemical manufacturing hub. With the expectation of an 8 to 9 percent real economic growth for the region and the state. And this opportunity stretches beyond hydrocarbons. Shale gas has the potential to bring a resurgence to regional manufacturing and to provide a backdrop for the creation of a new wave of high-tech jobs. That plant may seem like a long way from Donegal, but the truth is it is only 50 minutes on back roads. When the new Route 576 access to the airport is completed, it will take much less time than that. 
that access road will intersect Interstate 79 at Cannonsburg. People from Pittsburgh travel 20 plus miles to Washington County and the townships to work and live every day. Don't you think they would travel here to live if all of this growth takes place? There will be lodging and housing needs for the approximate 13,000 drawn to the area. Have you been to Monaco or Beaver County region? How much land is available there? How much land is available in Donegal Township? Why wouldn't the residents of Donegal Township want a piece of this pie? The truth is that many residents do want a piece for their future and for their kids' future. However, that future needs some guidelines to ensure the preservation of our rural atmosphere and uniform growth. Some members of the township have the thought that zoning represents some form of creeping totalitarianism, or at the very least, a grievous loss of liberty or freedom. That premise is a misconception of what all those ideas are about. Those same few residents believe that rules are for everyone else and they simply want a piece of the pie without abiding by any of those rules. Zoning protects everyone, ensures that everyone is following the same rules. Enough said, Donegal residents must realize that changes are coming and the only way to control them and protect your property and farmland is to implement zoning. And my last comment is that I was under the impression that this hearing was to present facts other than attack attacking individuals. Uh, first of all, I have to rebut that. Everyone has seen when a big company comes in to an area and they spread enough money around and they jump through enough hoops, they're going to do whatever they want. You'll go to court. They're going to get what they want, regardless of our little zoning rules. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's a fact. You represent townships where it happens all the time. Secondly, I have a question. Almost two years ago, Dave, you looked me square in the eye and said you wanted to see this process through. You hadn't made up your mind. I'm asking you tonight process has been seen through. Have you made up your mind? No. Or we voted one. Yeah. Okay. What's that? Jack, can you shut the HVAC off? We <laughs> I don't think we need them while everybody's in here. You can put on a fan or something. <clears throat> Sure. Spell your last name. I A M S. It is Tammy T A M M I. Uh, from Don um, I am going to bring up points that are in the zoning ordinance that um, I feel are still in question. Um, on page six, there is still not a definition or processing facilities. Um, I feel that, again, these definitions, there might be one for a processing plant, but not a facility. I just think that that wording needs to be cleared up again. Again, these are just points that I see that some people can misunderstand. Um, the next one is going to be on page 30, well, it's 34. Sure. Um, it still talks about the fact that the building approval, and this cranny you may went over this a little bit, must meet the provisions of Chapter 27 of the code. Um, that's still the UCC section. Um, I'm still unsure of how the building code official who is required to review the plans and is, only, is the only person that can review the plans 
if it's still in the code. I don't understand how it can still be in here. That it must still be a approval. Okay, so um, which one? Which one is this for? Where it states. That. Okay, so uh, for example, a compressor station. They so now with zoning, they will have to get zoning approval, and then that still is subject to any. If you look under I, any state, federal, you know, there, there's other permits, other applications, including when they actually go in to build that building and they provide the, the plans. What might come in front of zoning might just be a site plan. That actual building plans and, and what goes in there, that still has to get separate building approval. And that's that's why that is in there. So they will have to go to a building code enforcement officer and do that. Okay, I was just confused on how it reads. Yeah, so yeah, so zoning approval, that's that's showing that they can meet setbacks, that they're in the right district, you know, all those items, that, that's what would be through the zoning process of it. Um, and through a conditional use, uh, there could be additional conditions attached within reason, but ultimately when they go to build the actual compressor station or the processing plant, they will have to submit building diagrams, building, and that would go to a building officer according to the article. The UCC code at that time. Yeah. Okay. That, so that's what that means. Just ask. Yeah. Thank you. Um, 45 and 46. Um, the shooting range outdoor. Um, it talks about that the building has to conform to federal and state standards for operation. I don't know if any of you are aware that there aren't any. The other thing is E, on-site supervision um, shall be supplied at all times by an adult, experienced operator. Um, basically, this is stating that the business would be required to have an employee at the range at all times. The range is an open range. Um, I would like to know how you guys would intend to enforce this on this business when this is not required for any other business. How can you require one area of business to have employees present and you can't enforce that upon other businesses? You can't pick and choose the enforcement here. The next thing is, is on G where it talks about that they have to show compliance with the National Rifles Association. Um, that is a private organization. I do not believe that you can ask anybody to hold up standards to a private organization because that is something that you have to belong to. You can't enforce that upon the people. Um, on page 61. Um, about, um, it's, it's under the Elimination. It also says that the elimination um, sign permitted only with accordance to the lighting performance standards established with, with this ordinance. I cannot find lighting performance standards within this ordinance. Therefore, I think this is something that needs to be revised before anything moves forward with this document. And again, I will remind the board, everybody, that there is a court hearing on December 20th still for this ordinance. And I would caution the board as to take any action this evening until that hearing is over. Thank you. I'll go last. Bales fan. You're up. <clears throat> JD Martin, Pelican Township. Um, it's sad what has come out of this. <coughs> and you guys were warned a couple years ago how this would go and it pretty much has. Um, that you've got neighbor against neighbor, as Mike said, friend against friend, relative against relative. Um, it is not 
necessarily about the zoning, but how you went about it, as he said. Um, it's sad that you have to have a citizens group of Donovan Township's residents form a group to protect the interests of the citizens of Donovan Township when that's what you three are charged with doing. It is sad that we have to take you to court to get you to do things the correct, proper, legal way. It's sad that you continue to not listen to the voice of the people. It's sad that you continue to waste their taxpayers' dollars. Um, when, I believe it was the first court hearing, we're sort of running together now, but when we took it to court and then the judge said, yes, you had to go back and do it the right way, and you guys you know, disagreed to do that, which is fine, that's great, that's how it should have been first place, we shouldn't have had to go to court to do that. Um, when you did that and you put it back in the hands of the planning commission, that meeting was the best, most productive meeting in this building as long as I've been here. You had the board, you had the citizens, you had open lines of communication, it was very productive, very civil. It was an awesome meeting, as it should be. As Mike pointed out, once things changed, and not, not to pick on anybody, as Ms. Prescott said, but Doug, once you got on the board and changed the dynamics of the board and how it was run, that very first meeting, things were very heated. The tone, the atmosphere, the attitude, it escalated. It, it was not for the better. It was for the worse. It's, again, by you not going about it the way you have and not listening to the will of people and not doing it the way you should, that's where the issues lie. Um, there are numerous things. One that keeps jumping out that I had on my list that Eddie brought up. Doug, you just said this. Michael, you said this. It's in the zoning. It's all about public health, safety, and welfare of the residents of the township, right? Do we all agree at least on that? That, that's, that this is to protect and preserve. What was your exact words? Protect and preserve and the public health, safety, and welfare. Well, one thing that I brought up numerous times, okay, you, you guys say it's all about gas and oil. You know what I mean? But yet there was six pages, give or take, on gas and oil, everything, compressor stations and processing plants and pads and everything incorporated as a whole industry. There was about five and a half, six pages. But you had like 15 or 16 and a half pages on communications towers that are regulated by the FCC you have no control over that's totally irrelevant. And I, know, I guess I'm talking to you, Michael, because at least two of the three are not paying any attention. Um, J.D., I'm going to tell you right now, if you want me to engage you, you might as well forget it. So I suggest you, and why is, he not, why is he not sticking to the public hearing as far as why we want zoning or why we don't want zoning? It's not time That's to exactly personal, exactly what I'm talking it's about. It's not time to personal attack the board. I'm not. I, I just said, you said it's public health, safety, and welfare. So where I was going with this was mining. Okay? Now... Mining, there's a lot more issues for public health, safety, and welfare, and there's a lot of mining activity around in here. They're going underneath of us. They're right down here. There's tons of mining accidents. There's tons of loss of life and injury in mining. There's tons of environmental hazards in mining and health issues. There's not one word in that whole ordinance about mining. We brought it up. It was one of the key issues, Michael, if you remember, that I brought up that we thought we had that discussion and it was productive. Yes, we need to address that. You said you were going to check, when we suggested, and you said, I think that'd be a good thing to check into the similar and surrounding communities, see what they had, and get back to us, right? And that's when, and that's what I'm saying, we were moving forward. We were going item by item, page by page. We were helping construct and make it the best it could be. Then again, the dynamics changed, and it just, screw it, we're done, push it through not the way to do it. So, Dave, to answer your question, that absolutely Jay, has to be the exact... no question. I'm not asking you a question. I was making a comment. That I was stating that that absolutely has to do with the zoning of what I'm talking about. And it absolutely has to do with public health, safety, and welfare. Okay? 
And you're right, you shouldn't engage, you sh shouldn't actually be able to say anything because you admitted in a public meeting that you didn't even read it. So I don't know how you can impose something on other people that you have not read. Which brings me to my next point. You've got the chairman of the supervisors and the chairman of the planning commission that both admittedly, in an open meeting, admitted they had not read this. How can you possibly impose, how can it possibly be legal to impose law, ordinance, anything, on citizens if you have not read it and you don't know it, read it in its entirety and know what it says? That, that in itself should be enough to table it. That, that, that's ridiculous. You've got a lot of gray matter we, we talked about. And Michael, I, I, I want to give you credit. Because once you, that was a good move. Once you took over the meetings, once you got involved with it, it was productive. We were give and take, we were moving forward, we were, it was being constructive. And again, until it changed dynamics and went the other way. So thank you for that. I know it's not a difficult, uh, an easy, it, that it's a difficult position to be in, but I appreciate your professionalism and trying to do what, what you have done. Um, but the mining thing is huge. How, how can we overlook that? How, how can you put something forward that doesn't address one of the biggest industries in this area that there's a lot more risk to health, safety, and welfare than there is communication towers, for God's sakes, and a bunch of other stuff that's in there. Um, the zone, proposed zoning ordinance, and I guess this would be a question for you. The proposed zoning ordinance and the map have two different dates. Could you explain why that is? Uh, the, the zoning ordinance of May 25th were based on my notes of discussions that had in pre you know, the previous meetings. Um, the zoning map is in a format that I cannot edit, and I tried to get a hold of the previous company that was hired by the township, EPD, to initially created that. Um, I was waiting to hear back on them eventually.